Okay. <clears throat> so um, let's move on to other things I wanted to tell you uh, about this problem of clustering in the stochastic block model. Uh, so uh, one thing that I wanted to tell you about is uh, the argument that is uh, uh, used to show that there exist cases where we are below the Kesten Stigum threshold. And yet we know that with a, a, a non-polynomial uh, computational power, we can cluster the, the nodes in a, a significant manner. So the best argument that I know of is in a paper by Banks et al in 2016. Uh, so it applies to the uh, uh, Q blocks case. Uh, so we have two parameters in that case. We have the symmetric Q blocks case. We have the, in, the, in the mean progeny matrix, we have uh, uh, the uh, parameter uh, on the diagonal that is one constant and we have a second parameter that is the parameter of the diagonal so these are the two uh, the two parameters we need to specify the model uh, so on this slide i call a c in uh, the probability of putting an edge so if i have two nodes okay i have two nodes in the same block so uh, sigma i equals sigma j, then the probability that uh, i is a neighbor of j, given uh, the vector of spins, this is uh, given by c in over n. And if uh, sigma i is distinct from sigma j, then this is uh, equal to uh, c out over n. So these are my two parameters in, in that model plus uh, the number of blocks Q. Uh, so in that case, we can figure out the uh, uh, eigenvalues of the mean progeny matrix. Uh, uh, these are uh, alpha, uh, the average degree that is uh, given by C in plus Q minus one C out over Q. So that's an easy exercise. We have lambda two, uh, that is also a simple explicit function of the three parameters of the model. So uh, how, do we, uh, how do we prove that there exist uh, triplets of parameters, uh, Q, C in, C out, such that we are below the Kesten stigma threshold and yet uh, we can cluster uh, in a meaningful manner? Well, we'll end up using uh, what is known as a, a first moment method argument. We are going to define some, uh, a notion of a partition we will call a good partition. Uh, and then the first moment method is an argument that will be used to prove that uh, any partition that meets this definition of being a good partition is necessarily uh, such that it achieves a positive overlap with a true partition, okay? Uh, so let's uh, uh, pass the definition of a good partition. Uh, so it's a partition of the N vertices into equal sized uh, uh, blocks, so rounding off, uh, I mean, if uh, N is not divisible by Q. Uh, okay, so you split it into a Q sets of size roughly N over Q, okay? And you ask that the number of edges uh, within each block is the one that you would expect if you had uh, uh, picked the right blocks. So we know that within a block, okay, uh, within a block, we have uh, uh, n over q vertices, and then for any two of them, we have uh, we have a probability c in over n of putting an edge. So if we want to figure out the expected number of edges within a block, that is exactly uh, given by uh, okay. We have uh, the number of pairs within a block of size n over q. That is uh, n over q choose two. And then uh, we multiply this by the probability of seeing uh, uh, an edge between uh, such a pair. And so that's uh, roughly n squared over 2 q squared times c in over n. Okay, so we, we can figure out how many edges we expect within a block. We can uh, <coughs> figure out how many edges we we expect that are not uh, confined to a, a set of our partition. And so we will say that we have a partition that is good if the number of edges it 
has that is uh, that are within a, a, a subsets in our partition is close to the expected number of internal edges in the true partition. And so close, we will uh, uh, define more precisely by saying this is distinct from the expected number by at most some. So we'll see if we do this uh, computation. So here you see a uh, number of internal edges within a block is of order n. So it's n c in over two q squared. So you have q blocks, you multiply that by q to get the uh, expected number uh, in total over the q blocks. So this is order n. And so this is a binomial uh, random variable uh, of uh, mean order n. So there's concentration, the fluctuations will be of order square root n. So uh, let's uh, uh, call a partition good if we are off uh, this average by at most something that is n to the two thirds. So something between n, the mean, and the uh, uh, fluctuations uh, root n. Uh, likewise for the uh, edges that are across. And so uh, we know that if we had picked uh, the correct partition, we would meet this criterion. So there exists at least one good partition. And so how do we show that any a good partition is necessarily such that it achieves a positive overlap? Well, that's where this uh, uh, first moment method uh, kicks in. Uh, we prove, so, we want to prove that the probability that there exists a partition of uh, n that is uh, that is good and and that achieves overlap less than some epsilon, then we'll <coughs> upper bound this by the expectation of the number of partitions that meet these two, con two conditions that are both good and have uh, epsilon at most overlap. Okay, and so, <coughs> Um, the beauty of the uh, uh, first moment method when it works is that you can compute those expectations. So you can get a formula, you pick an arbitrary partition, uh, you, can, you can do some combinatorics, you can uh, uh, look at how many partitions there are that have an overlap at most epsilon with a true uh, partition. And fixing one, then you throw in the edges at random and you uh, compute the expectation. So this is something you can get a handle on. It's a bit of combinatorics. So it's like in their paper, they, they do it uh, with skipping steps. It's one or two pages. So it's, it's not straightforward, but at least the rationale behind is very, is very clear. And so this works to show that for Q uh, larger than four, you do have uh, parameters below Kestenstigum for which uh, uh, this probability goes to zero. Hence, uh, <clears throat> there is no good partition that achieves an eps uh, 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 below epsilon uh, overlap. And so uh, the brute force algorithm, which scans all partitions, so exponential time, uh, but stops whenever you meet the criteria for a good partition, then this, this is successful, okay? And so it will stop because we know there exists one good partition because the true partition is a good one. Okay. So I wanted to just uh, uh, highlight this use of the first moment method uh, argument because that's the neatest way I know uh, to show the uh, existence of the uh, hard face in this, uh, in this case. So another thing I want to uh, discuss as a follow-up on that uh, uh, theorem on the structure of the uh, non-backtracking matrix of these random graphs we were looking at is a relation of uh, uh, the result uh, with a, a, a notion that has been uh, developed in graph theory uh, that uh, uh, is the notion of a uh, Ramanujan graph. And so I don't know if you have heard of uh, uh, expander graphs at some point. So uh, 
an, a, an expander graph is usually uh, defined as a graph that has a, a, a common degree for all nodes. So it's a regular graph. So all nodes have the same degree, could be d equals three, four, so same value. Uh, and it's an expander if the adjacency matrix has uh, its uh, uh, largest eigenvalue is going to be the Perron Frobenius eigenvalue, it's going to be D. It's a, it's a fact. If you take the adjacency matrix of a regular graph, okay, you plug in the all ones vector, then you get the degree times the all ones vector as the output. So D, the degree, is an eigenvalue of the adjacency matrix. And by the Perron Frobenius theorem, this is the largest modulus eigenvalue, okay? And so uh, expanders are graphs such that uh, they are regular and there is a gap that does not vanish even if the number of nodes goes to infinity. Uh, so it's a property of families of graphs with growing number of nodes. So the gap between the second largest eigenvalue and D does not vanish, it stays uh, uh, separated. Okay, so that was a bit of context before defining what a, a Ramanujan graph is. So it is a D regular graph for some integer D, such that uh, <clears throat> its eigenvalues have either a modulus D, like the Perron Frobenius eigenvalue. Uh, they could also have an eigenvalue minus D. Uh, that would be the case if you had a bipartite graph. Okay, you would have minus D also in the spectrum. Uh, but all the eigenvalues that have a modulus that is uh, strictly less than D have a modulus at most twice square root of D minus one. So that's the, the mysterious value that is used to define what a Ramanujan graph is. And so uh, why this value? Uh, well, this is because, okay, so, such Ramanujan graphs, they have a, a spectral gap between D and the next eigenvalue that is D minus square, twice square root of D minus one. So uh, for an arbitrary number of nodes. So if you have a, a family of Ramanujan graphs, this is also an ex, expanding family because you have uh, uh, this gap that does not vanish. But so the interesting uh, property, uh, uh, comes from this theorem due to Allen and Bopana in the 80s, which says that this is the best uh, possible spe uh, spectral gap that you can get for regular graphs, in fact. So uh, more precisely, uh, take a graph uh, uh, G that is deregular, that has a diameter that is sufficiently large. So let's say the diameter, uh, that's okay, the, you take the, uh, uh, Supremum of a pair of nodes of the graph distance between the two the two nodes. Okay, so that's the diameter. Suppose it's larger than twice uh, some parameter r plus one. Then uh, the second largest eigenvalue of the adjacency matrix of that graph must be at least uh, something that is uh, the value appearing in the statement of uh, the definition of a Ramanujan graph, so twice square root of D minus one, minus something that will uh, vanish to zero if R is large, okay? And so now think about this. If I fix D and I want to construct a family of uh, graphs with degree uh, D for all nodes and a, a growing number of nodes, so uh, growing to infinity, uh, necessarily the diameter has to go to infinity as well. Okay, so that's, uh, that's by the following argument. So if I have a, a fixed degree D, I consider uh, the number of uh, nodes uh, that are uh, within distance R of some node I. So at distance one, I'll get at most uh, D neighbors. And then each of these, uh, these D neighbors will have uh, at most D minus one neighbors that are two hops away from the first node. Okay. And so I can proceed like that. So eventually I can uh, see that uh, at a fixed distance R, there is a bounding number of nodes in a D regular graph. Okay. So if my number of nodes goes to infinity, 
then the diameter must go to infinity if I have fixed the uh, common degree d. Okay, so um, in other words, uh, if I have uh, parameter d, a family of graphs with a common degree d, but a growing, a growing number of nodes growing to infinity, then the diameter must diverge, and hence the second eigenvalue of the adjacency matrix must be asymptotically above twice square root d minus one. So you cannot get better spectral separation than uh, in a Ramanujan graph. Okay, so these are the best expanders that there are. All right, so let's uh, let's uh, try to. Okay, so I, I'll be able to answer one of these questions. Okay. Uh, you tend to call them spectral expanders, in fact, and the usual notion of expansion of a graph would be uh, more something like that. Uh, you uh, pick a, a set of vertices, set S of vertices of a graph. So the uh, isoperimetric uh, ratio for S, so phi of S, this is defined as the number of edges from S to its complement normalized by the size of S. So uh, let me uh, define everything here. So where E of S, S bar is the set of edges from I in S to J in S bar and S bar equals the set of vertices uh, minus the set S, okay? And uh, so that's the isoperimetric ratio of the set S. And the uh, isoperimetric constant of G I define as the infimum over S, a subset of the vertices that is of a size at most n over 2 of phi of S. Okay, so that's. Uh, uh, graph discrete uh, discrete construction analogous to the uh, uh, isoperimetric ratio of curves in the plane, if you like, because this would be like the size of the boundary of a set S. So that's the analog of the perimeter of, a, of an area in the plane. And this is the analog of the uh, volume of the set. So the analog of the uh, uh, area enclosed by a curve. So, you know, the classical isoperimetric problem asked if I have a, a, a string of length one, what is the uh, largest uh, uh, area that I can enclose? And this is solved by the, cyc the cycle. Uh, so this is the analog here. That would be the analog of the length of the string. And that would be the analog of the area that I enclose. Okay. so. That's the isoperimetric uh, constant of a, a graph. And so uh, uh, the classical definition is uh, uh, G is uh, uh, an expander, uh, well, a phi expander if uh, it's isoperimetric. constant is larger than uh, phi, okay? So uh, now you can talk about the uh, uh, expansion uh, of a family of graphs and a family of graphs with a, a growing number of nodes is an expanding family in this sense, if there is some non-vanishing number phi such that uh, all graphs in the family are uh, 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 phi expanders. Okay, so they have a, 
an isoperimetric ratio for the graphs that is uh, uniformly bounded from below. Uh, and it turns out that having uh, an isoperimetric ratio uniformly bounded from below is equivalent to having a spectral gap in the adjusted symmetrics uniformly bounded from below. And this is why the notion of being a, a spectral expanding family is equivalent to being a, a, an expanding family according to th this definition. Okay. So, yes, they tend to expand. So you expect the, the uh, uh, geometry of uh, neighborhoods of nodes to, to uh, grow more in an exponential fashion as you increase the, uh, uh, the uh, radius of the ball you consider. Uh, and uh, yes, so the equivalence of the two notions of a spectral expander and of an expander is a consequence of uh, an inequality that is known as Chigurh's inequality that uh, some of you may have uh, heard about. This is uh, an important inequality in the study of uh, the mixing times of Markov chains. So uh, I, I could elaborate on that, but... Uh, 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 I'm not sure. I, I, there are many reasons why expanders are interesting. So, for instance, if you consider a, a random walk on an expanding graph, it reaches equilibrium in a, a short amount of time. The expansion actually uh, conditions the time to equilibrium for the random walk. So, uh, if you want to sample at random from a, a graph, it being an expander is a good thing for you. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, Anyhow, so um, about the second question that was, uh, why is it called the Ramanujan graph? So it's because of a conjecture of Ramanujan in uh, graph theory, I believe, that I did not fully understand. And so uh, solving this conjecture by Ramanujan was instrumental in uh, exhibiting Ramanujan graphs. So those guys, uh, Lubotsky, Phillips, and Sarnak, who produced this definition, they, they also worked on trying to construct explicit Ramanujan graphs. And this is a notoriously difficult task, but typically you can uh, you have infinite groups, you can have quotients of those infinite groups that are finite. And so uh, those finite quotients, you can have a Cayley graph of a group, and you can prove that the Cayley graph of a group uh, constructed uh, according to their work and using the Ramanujan conjecture is a Ramanujan graph, something like that. But uh, yeah. Okay, so um, I wanted to, so, okay, I, I'll probably not go into the proof of the uh, Alan Bopana uh, result, uh, unless you, you ask strongly for it. Okay, so let me not, not do that yet, at least. Uh, so uh, what's the relationship between what I was telling you about and these uh, Ramanujan graphs? So uh, there is a, a beautiful formula about uh, non-backtracking matrices that is the uh, ihara bass formula, and that uh, <clears throat> gives you a... a lower dimensional characterization somehow of the spectrum of the non-backtracking matrix of a graph. So uh, assume you have a graph B, uh, a graph G, you have uh, uh, its associated uh, non-backtracking matrix uh, uh, B, and you're interested in, uh, in uh, its eigenvalues. So you're interested in uh, uh, the roots of uh, the determinant of the identity minus uh, u times b, so that, that are going to be the reciprocals of the eigenvalues. 
Okay, and so this quantity, if you scale it up at, by one minus u squared to the power of the number of nodes n minus the number of edges m in your in your graph, then this is the determinant of a n by n matrix. So you've gone from computing the determinant of a, a matrix of size twice the number of edges to uh, the determinant of a matrix that is uh, uh, the number of nodes instead. And so the n dimensional matrix uh, in the right hand side is uh, the identity minus u times the adjacency matrix plus u squared times a uh, diagonal matrix uh, Q whose entries correspond to the degrees of the nodes uh, of the nodes in the graph uh, minus one. So entry uh, uh, at the uh, highest uh, uh, place on the diagonal is di minus one where di is the degree of node i in your graph. So you have this relationship and so um, from this, actually, uh, you, you, you can specialize it if you have a regular graph. So let's see what this gives. So for a, a regular graph, uh, if you have di, which is equal to d uh, for all i, all uh, verti uh, vertices, then you have that uh, 1 minus u squared. Uh, so that's what uh, uh, n minus n. Uh, Yes, that of uh, identity minus UB, then this uh, specializes to a uh, debt of uh, identity minus UA uh, plus U squared D minus one times the identity. And so <clears throat> uh, something that uh, uh, cancels this term, so if uh, u is a zero of uh, uh, that i minus u b. That is uh, neither one nor minus one is going to uh, is going to show up here. So you'll have uh, uh, it is going to be a zero of uh, this. And so uh, this means that uh, 1 minus u lambda plus u squared d minus 1 equals 0 for uh, some lambda in the spectrum of, uh, of A. Okay. And so this gives you a map uh, from the spectrum of A to the spectrum of B. And so, uh, because of this map, you can now uh, take the, for instance, the definition of a, of a Ramanujan graph. You can say, okay, I have in my uh, irregular graph, uh, okay, eigenvalues of modulus D, and all the other eigenvalues are of modulus at most uh, twice square root D minus one. So this uh, translates into properties on the spectrum of B, okay? So I leave it to you as an exercise to uh, see what, uh, to, to do this mapping, see uh, how you can characterize the property of being Ramanujan on the spectrum of B instead of on the spectrum of A. And that gives you the corollary here. So you have a, a Ramanujan graph if and only if the uh, non-backtracking matrix B uh, has its eigenvalues that are either equals, all equal in modulus to uh, d minus one, the, the degree minus one, or uh, at most the square root of d minus one. Okay, so this there's a subtle mapping here, but uh, it exists. And so uh, that has been used, this correspondence between uh, uh, the spectra of B and, and uh, the adjacency matrix A uh, to uh, uh, try and develop a theory of Ramanujan graphs for graphs that are not necessarily regular and that can have uh, degrees that differ from one node to another. Okay. So, um,
Yes, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, actually, it is proven by showing a, 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 an identity of matrices and underlying it. And so, uh, uh, any, anyway, yes, yes, that's true. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. The, the proof of the Ihara Bass formula is used in the construction of this better Hessian model. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, people uh, working in, in, in graph theory, in particular, uh, Audrey Terras, who's done some fundamental work in graph theory and also in group theory, and so who's uh, interested in uh, Ramanujan graphs. So she proposed. Uh, this uh, extension of the notion of a Ramanujan graph to uh, uh, non-regular graphs. And so basically, you just take uh, uh, this corollary, remove the uh, <coughs> condition that the graph is regular, and you get a definition that is that extends the uh, previous definition of the Ramanujan graph. So that's what it is. We would say that a graph is Ramanujan if and only if uh, the eigenvalues of the non backtracking matrix uh, are either the, uh, uh, the, the their modulus is either that of the Perron Frobenius eigenvalue, so the maximum uh, modulus, or uh, less than the square root of this maximum modulus. Okay, so that's the extension. And um, so now we can look back at our result on the spectra of these uh, 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 non-backtracking matrices of random graphs. So in particular, take the simplest stochastic block model that there is, which is an Erdos-Rémy graph. So uh, only one block, right? So uh, n vertices and probability of an edge between any two vertices is uh, alpha over n. Uh, so uh, the theorem specializes in that case to say, uh, the uh, largest eigenvalue of uh, B in modulus is given by alpha up to a, a term that vanishes in probability as n becomes large. All the other eigenvalues are with high probability less than square root alpha plus a term that vanishes. So we can reinterpret this particular case in, li uh, in light of the notions of Ramanujan graphs and uh, uh, Ramanujan graphs in particular for non-regular uh, graphs uh, in the following manner. We can say that uh, up to a little o of one error, the erdos rheny graph is a Ramanujan graph uh, uh, according to this extended definition. So it has uh, somehow the uh, equivalent of this uh, uh, maximum spectral separation uh, uh, that we have for the uh, classical Ramanujan graphs. Uh, and so um, uh, there's a, a similar result that had been established for random regular graphs in 2008 by Joel Friedman. Yes? If, sorry. If, a uh, previous definition was a gap on the eigenvalues of the adjacent symmetrics. So, uh, uh, yes, yes, that's right. That's right. It's, uh, yeah, it does not imply that indeed, indeed. Um, Okay, I, I think being Ramanujan, okay. Uh, well, you could be Ramanujan and yet disconnected. So you want to throw in the fact that it's connected, I guess. Uh, am I right? Okay, let, let's, uh, let's uh, talk it over uh, after the... the uh, I'm done here. Um, okay, so uh, Friedman had shown that a random regular graph uh, of uh, uh, common degree D for all the vertices is going to uh, meet the Ramanujan uh, bound uh, up to a vanishing uh, correction. 
So we knew from his result that uh, random regular graphs were uh, uh, near Ramanujan graphs. So now we have uh, somehow uh, an analog for uh, non-regular graphs. Uh, the simpler model of a, a Nerdos-Rainy graph is not regular, but it uh, does meet a similar property. Uh, okay, so the last thing I wanted to say is uh, uh, how uh, can you relate those results to uh, uh, results you have, I think, uh, seen uh, in other courses this week. Uh, in particular, uh, I guess Mark Potters and Mark Lelarge uh, uh, spoke of low uh, uh, of uh, low rank deformations of random matrices. So you have heard about this bike, uh, Benarus Peche uh, phase transition. And so typically you have a low rank matrix, you add a noise matrix, so it could be a Wigner matrix. And uh, uh, you have a, a, a threshold condition on the uh, on the magnitude of the eigenvalues of the low rank uh, matrix that is used as a deformation of the noise matrix. So, to be specific here, uh, uh, let's assume we have a, a Wigner matrix for the uh, for the noise matrix with a, a variance of the entries uh, of order sigma squared over n for. A, order one sigma squared. And so we have uh, the low rank matrix Pn. Uh, so uh, uh, the threshold condition on the eigenvalues uh, lambda i of the low rank deformation are that uh, their uh, square is above uh, sigma squared. And so if uh, they meet this uh, BBP uh, condition, then they uh, are reflected in the spectrum of the of the matrix Pn plus uh, Wn. Okay, so in a sense, what we uh, have done on the non-backtracking matrix is a sparse version of this. And at first sight, it's not very clear why. Okay, so there's Kesten Stigum, and then there's BBP, and so okay, what 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 is the connection? And in fact, uh, the uh, uh, Ihara Bass formula gives us a connection. And uh, uh, so that's what I wanted to uh, 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 conclude on. So uh, take again our uh, uh, stochastic block model. So what we observe is uh, 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 the block matrix that is the conditional expectations of the edge variables, okay? Um, that's low rank. The rank is at most the number of blocks. And we add a noise matrix that is a bit nastier than the Wigner matrix, but it's a zero mean entries uh, with independence assumptions. So let's try now to match this to the uh, deformation of a low, uh, by a low rank matrix of the Wigner matrix. So uh, the variance parameter in BBP sigma squared would be uh, the analog uh, of the sum of the variances of the uh, 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 edge variables conditioned on the spin variables. And so in our uh, stochastic block model, this is the parameter alpha, okay? Uh, so Pn is the analog of the uh, conditional expectation of uh, the adjacency given the spins, okay? Uh, and the spectrum uh, of this conditional expectation, this is exactly the spectrum of the mean progeny matrix we have introduced. So we, we have... Uh, a, uh, this analogy. And so uh, now you can uh, uh, <coughs> say that the Kesten Stigum condition, which is uh, when uh, uh, an eigenvalue uh, lambda i of the mean progeny matrix has its square uh, strictly larger than alpha, this is exactly the BBP condition. Okay, so that gives you, uh, um, that gives you a formal correspondence. Okay. And actually, we can push that uh, uh, a bit further using the Ihara Bass uh, uh, formula. Um, and we can even, so I guess you have seen also uh, how the eigenvalues of uh, the low uh, rank matrix Pn get transformed when you uh, add the uh, noise uh, uh, matrix, the Wigner matrix. So lambda gets transformed to uh, lambda plus uh, sigma squared over lambda. So we get, uh, we, we can retrieve that as well. Uh, uh, so 
uh, recall the Ihara Bass formula, which tells you how to go between the spectrum of B and the spectrum of uh, some N uh, dimensional matrices. So now if the degrees in your random graphs are close to their mean, uh, you, you can really uh, uh, retrieve a correspondence between the uh, eigenvalues of the adjacency matrix and the eigenvalues uh, of the non-backtracking matrix. Uh, and so that's what this corollary says. It says that uh, in the case where your uh, uh, degrees concentrate, then uh, an eigenvalue in the spectrum of B, the, uh, <coughs> the uh, non-backtracking matrix is reflected. Uh, so this lambda eigenvalue is reflected by lambda plus alpha over lambda in the spectrum of A, okay? Uh, and so this is exactly the formula that you had in the BBP theory, okay? So uh, that's what I write here. This suggests that in the SBM, when the average degree is uh, large compared to one, then uh, if uh, it is such that there's concentration of degrees around their mean, uh, we would have uh, in the spectrum of the adjacency matrix, we would uh, see uh, eigenvalues lambda i of m plus alpha over lambda i of m. Uh, and, uh, Actually, we can, we can prove that. Uh, and this is something that's been done essentially by my PhD student, Ludovic Stefan, in a paper uh, of last year. So uh, we could push the spectral analysis we have uh, uh, for the sparse SBM to a not so sparse SBM where the degrees uh, grow so sufficiently fast. Uh, and so we have a version of uh, uh, the BBP results with a prediction of uh, uh, the occurrence of eigenvalues in the spectrum of the adjacency matrix, as well as predictions on the uh, uh, correlations of the corresponding eigenvectors with the eigenvectors uh, of the low rank deformation. Uh, so all, all this goes through, in fact. And so the interesting thing is that this is formally, also, so it gives you a confirmation that this is somehow the same phenomenon we have uh, looked at as the BBP transition phenomenon. Uh, it also gives you another uh, way of proving things uh, of this nature, and it gives you results in, uh, under assumptions that are not the same. So we, we can cover uh, noise models that are quite different, in fact, using different techniques. Um, Okay, and so I think this is uh, where I wanted to stop for, for today. This result that you're talking about at the end, do you need the, um, the connectivity to scale with the, with the system size, with the number of nodes, or you can still take it finite and let it go to infinity? You, you mean the average degree? Uh, yes. Parameter? No, we want it to be uh, uh, such that the node degree is concentrated. If we want to uh, uh, have conclusions on the spectrum of the adjacency matrix, we need this concentration of the mm -hmm. degrees around their mean. And so we need basically to have a, a average degree order log n does work, for instance. Okay, okay. But it needs to scale with n okay. number of vertices. And did you connect this result? Because there is another way to see the connections between BBP and uh and the SBM through the mutual information. Okay. You can prove that the mutual information between um, the, the observed matrix, like the, the, the deformed matrix in, in, BB, in the BBB uh, problem and the hidden deformation, the, the rank one part, is the same as the mutual information between uh, the random graph in the SBM model and the planted partition in the limit of large degree. Uh, you can show that the mutual information are the same, yeah, using okay. a Lindeberg principle. Okay. Yeah. okay. And I wonder how it connects to what you did, but. Uh, well, I think it's different. So we, we are really. Uh, we, we really push our estimates for the spectrum of B uh, to be able to control all yes, the error yeah. terms when alpha grows uh, sufficiently fast, uh, but not too fast. 
so th there's work here in tracking the magnitude of the uh, uh, the corrections we have mm -hmm. and uh, then we can really leverage uh, uh, the uh, ihara bass formula for the spectrum is is uh, not so hard uh, but we also have a correspondence between the eigenvectors so okay. you, we can construct the eigenvectors for b somehow we control the error in this construction and we have a uh, uh, there's an eigenvector version of the ihara bass formula so you can take an eigenvector of b you project it in dimension uh, uh, n and you get an eigenvector for a uh, in the regular case so in the non-regular uh, case, but nearly a regular case, this also works. Okay. You have a near eigenvector and you can control the errors there. Okay. So I, I guess it's, it's a bit different. Okay. But then what you say about mutual information uh, would apply even if alpha does not go to infinity. It's uh, no. for finite alpha, but large enough and... Uh, I'm, I'm not so sure. I don't... No, I think you, you still need a growing uh, degree. Okay. Yeah. A any speed, but uh, growing, I think. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any question? All right. Thank you very much, then. Let me ask if those online that want to show their face can do it so that we may take, uh, if there are enough people online showing their faces, we can take a group picture and we can try also the people here to see if we can catch as many as possible. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see. Audio gallery. Okay, come on, come on, show your faces, everyone. Don't be shy. More, more, we need more. There are too many. Yes, much better. I need at least a full screen field with you. Come on, at least five more. You can do it. And you can and yeah. <laughs> try 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 to come uh, try to go there actually because there is the camera. If everyone that is here in the room can go there. It would be perfect. Still need some faces. Okay, Devendra has a camera problem, but. Come on, don't hesitate to connect. Don't worry, the, the picture will remain among us if you, if you don't want to share it. Okay. Yeah. All right, so the last one have a, still a chance to show their face. You have five seconds. Okay. Okay, how do I do that? So now I know. Yeah, it seems I know how to. All right, smile, everyone. Ah, if, yeah, I succeeded. I succeeded. I will, I'll take another one. All right. Cool, it works. Thanks. <laughs> All right. See you, everyone, tomorrow.